Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and welcome to our Friday night broadcast. And tonight we're doing life hacks. I'm just going to quickly sort out a couple of screens that I need because I've got notes on one and, <laughs> and I've got chat on another. Hi there, Jamie. How are you doing? Okay, so we've got that sorted. All right, and now let me... Hi, Krista. Welcome. I'm just sorting out a couple of quick screens before we start and just while we wait for people to come in. And of course I had them all sorted out and then I clicked on something and spoiled it all. I don't know if any of you relate to that. <laughs> in other words, I am quite human. All right, so. Today we're going to go under the general title of caring is sharing. And maybe sharing is caring, rather. Because it struck me that we have so many great people on the broadcasts, and you've all got, I'm sure, super ideas about different ha life hacks. And I thought, you know, we really should do a couple of broadcasts every now and then, just sharing you know, what aha moments you've had, like, this really works, you know, but one, wonder why I waited a lifetime to find this out. All right, hi, Jody, and for all of you who see the little wrench next to Jody, it's not that she likes to put a, you know, a wrench into things, it is because she is my chief, <laughs> so admin person uh, in terms of keeping me on track and also keeping notes for me. So what I actually wanted to say was we all have good ideas and tips. The question is, how many have we got together? I go back, I said something at the lunchtime broadcast about synergy. And one of the fabulous things about synergy is that you know, one person's idea will lead to another person's idea, and then you end up with an even better one. You thought she was the repairman. No, the repairman, yeah, the repairman was visiting Kerry, right? <laughs> that was at lunchtime, people. She kept disappearing to talk to the repairman, or so she said. All right, so just a quick update um, to let you know. Erin was on at the lunchtime broadcast and she updated us. And basically, they're trying to give her some new medication in the hope that they can wean her off prednisone, prednisone um, which I believe really is quite nasty. Um, so they're going to, you know, they're trying to get her off that. But if the, if her liver function doesn't, uh, balance as they take her off, you know, we're, we've got another problem. So just so that you know, she's hoping not to have to have an operation. She's hoping that the new drugs will work. And so are we. And we were talking about what an inspiration she has been for all of us, for those of you who know it. Jody's had a rough week, just so that you know, but she's still there hanging on, helping me every way she knows how, which for which I'm very, very grateful. And to give you an idea, of how much Jody actually helps without you guys knowing. Uh, during the lunchtime broadcast today, I, you know, change topics and I sort of would go, um, okay, I'm about to go on to this section. And Jody took a note. And when I finished, I said to her, it's going to take me a while now because I've got to work out where all the different bits were and find out what time they were at. And Jody just fed them back to me. So if you hear me say, Jody, please take a note of the time, you'll know why. So when I go to edit, I can put up, we started talking at this time on this particular part of the subject. Take care. So I don't know if you guys have got the emails yet. They're going, I'm sending out about 20 a day. So it's just, and it's not by 
who I like most. It's just by the way they're coming up on the mailing list. Um, I, I'm sending out uh, a quick email to you to let you know that we are going to form a VIP mailing list. And this VIP mailing list will get a sort of a bi-monthly newsletter where before I put anything up into the shop, you're going to know about it. So if you want me not to put it up in the shop because you um, <laughs> you can't live without it or whatever, or if you want to be the first in the shop to make sure you get it, I, I wanted to give that possibility to you. And it will also update you on any changes that we're making within Dear Mama Sal. We've been doing this experiment here on YouTube Live, and I have to tell you, it's really made a difference. It's much more stable. For me, it's much more stable. There are far less concerns all around. And I believe you guys have to tell me, I believe the quality is excellent and that you guys are doing fine with it as well. Now, obviously, it has upset a couple of people who don't do change well, and I understand that. The other thing is, please notice that when I put, I leave the replay up at the moment. When I put the replay up, I take out the, um, take out the, what do you call it? The notes, you know, the, this, the chat. I, I, I'm putting a block on that. However, I do mention names. I might say Jody or Krista or Jamie or whatever, but you have to know who these people are to recognize them on the, on the um, playback. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I think that that way uh, we've got a sort of balance between keeping people fairly private, but on the other hand, updating those that want. Got to have a cup. Oh, as I look at myself, did you know it's Tartan Day? I was hoping, really hoping, that Les would come on today. Um, we're just testing it for this month, uh, Nana. At the end of the month, I, I, we will make a decision. And if I decide, okay, that's it, then what I will do is I will send out a, um, a notice to everybody saying, you know, we're coming off Vaughn. What I would like to do is I want to do some closed door type sessions for those people who need it or want it. And... Um, I might do those on Hangouts. You don't like it at all? Okay. And I'm sorry for that, Anna. I really am. But you didn't like Vaughn either or... But anyway, I think it's, you know, what you're used to sort of thing. But I have done everything I can to try and, you know, um, please most of the people most of the time. I was, you know, really having a problem with the quality of the other programs and the amount of hackers we got and and trolls and things like that. And I, I really got fed up with it. Okay, so here we go. Um, yes, but when we originally went on to Vaughn, you didn't like it at all. I can remember. <laughs> so if you want to be, if you want to be uh, on the mailing list, uh, you'll probably get an email from me, but if you want to short circuit the email coming to you, um, just send me an email at dearmamasal at gmail.com and just put yes to the list in the um, subject line and I will just automatically put you on. Um, and that, that means that I you know, can show that you really wanted to be on. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Nana. Everybody's, I, um, our stories promote your channel, yeah. So what are you really saying? Well, so was Vaughn, Nana. The only thing was you didn't realize that. Vaughn was just as public as this is. All right? D do you realize that, right? Vaughn was just as public. This is no more public than Vaughn was. And if you notice... You mean that you, it's the replay that you, you object to? I 
Well, I'm willing to talk about that, Nana, because one of the questions I was going to ask, and I will be asking it in a form of a um, poll, is I'm going to ask everybody if they would like for the replays to be, uh, would they be prepared to pay for the replays? And this, the reason I say that is because the replays are really important for lots of reasons. It brings new people to us. It helps people who might not have been able to get to the broadcast. People who wanted to get to the broadcast but couldn't get there are able to listen to it later. And so there are lots of advantages to having it there. But I understand in your case, and by the way, I think, Nanny, you're the only one that has a problem with it. Oh, Nana. Nana, let me say something to you just so that you get a reality check here. I've done I've done this for five years. Do you know how much money I've made? I just want to make sure you're in reality here. I think the total amount of money I have made in five years is $2,000. Do you know how much it has cost me to be on the broadcast? Well, the reason I was saying that is if, if that was an issue, I could put, anyway, well, you know, it, to me, it's like we, you understand it and I understand that you're upset about it and I, I can't please everybody. And that's very sad for me, as you know. And hopefully we'll still say, stay friends. If you decide you don't want to be part of the YouTube thing anymore, I will understand. Um, all right. So first of all, I wanted to say, for those of you who know Lauren, um, Lauren is still in hospital, and but she appears to be doing quite well. And she will stay in hospital until she gets the skin graft, just so that you know that. And Jody, are you feeling any better this week? I know you've been having a problem sleeping uh, amongst, you know, other things. So lots of thoughts and prayers are would be appreciated. <laughs> Leila, it's a pleasure, honey. <laughs> Let me send you a hug. Uh, Jody, I'm really sorry to hear that. And but even so, you you need to know everybody that she's always there helping me whenever I need anything. So I'm very very appreciative. Oh, <laughs> you know something, Chrissy? <laughs> Welcome, uh, Chrissy. I don't know if you know who I am or what I am, but I'm sitting here in Southern British Columbia. And uh, you know, Nana, it it has a little thing where if you talk too many times in thirty seconds, it just warns you just to slow it down a bit and let other people talk, right? So, Chrissy, welcome. Let us know where you're from. If you care to share roughly how old you are, you know, give a decade, thirties, <laughs> forties, you know, or like me, seventies. Um, the other thing is that we may want to give you a couple of. Um, ideas about <laughs> who we are and we don't have many rules here we try and keep it friendly as far as we can we try and keep the language pretty cool um, and the other thing you're in california in your 30s well welcome actually if jamie jamie's still here uh unfortunately i have to change the window to see if jamie's still here Oh, what a pity. Uh, Jamie was here. She was also from California. She's also from California. Layla's in Texas and you're 38. Okay, well, welcome. It's a real pleasure to have you here, guys. And I'm glad that you enjoy the content. Uh, I'm certainly trying to make sure that we do uh, different sorts of content to help different sorts of people. Yeah, and everybody who's here, just tell everybody <laughs> who you are and what you are. Um, I just wanted to give a Big round of applause to both Kerry, for those of you who know Kerry, and Angela, both viewers. Uh, they both started new jobs and appear to be having a lot of fun doing them, which, you know, we always like to hear, right? 
We've got a couple of birthdays coming up. And as you can probably tell, Chrissy, we're a bit of a family here. <laughs> we like to think of ourselves as the extended family you wish you had as opposed to the one you might have. So the birthday is coming up. Um, Paul in Boston is on the 12th. And then Adam, for those of you who remember Adam, and Nana would remember Adam, Adam from Ohio, uh, he, his is on the 14th. So that's that. And I was wondering, uh, you might let me know your comments on this one in the comments afterwards, but how, if you enjoyed sharing these sort of life hack type things, you know, I will schedule them in more often. And if you have any suggestions on topics, it doesn't matter how serious or how funny or whatever, what topics you would like, um, excuse me, I've got a itchy eye, then you miss me? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be missed, isn't it? <laughs> uh, if you've got any topics that you would like to have me talk about or you want to have as a discussion, please, please, please just let me know. I'm, um, I'm going to be putting up some different sorts of videos, hopefully, and I do need your support. I was wondering if you guys would care to support me on something. <laughs> do do any of you get scared about anything? This is just before I get into the main thing. Uh, I haven't pulled my trailer out of my driveway since big brother Jeff, for those of you who remember my brother's visit two and a half years ago, in fact, nearly three years ago. I have not moved my trailer since that trip. And so I wondered if you guys could, you know, help me get my big girl underwear on and actually hook up my trailer and see how far I can get it <laughs> before it, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's still working. I don't know if it's going to break down. I did have somebody check the tires, but I intend to have somebody check them again. Um, so, but the only way I'm going to find out is to hook it up and take it out somewhere. And I have a wedding down in the States that I need to go to. By the way, I will be away next Sunday. I just want to tell you that. Uh, I ha have to go down to into the States to do a speech. And so I am hoping that I will be able to do a broadcast. But the truth is I am going to be the guest uh, of somebody else. And therefore, as a, you know, I'm going to be staying in their house. So you understand that being a guest in somebody else's house, it might not be as easy for me to do a broadcast. But if they've got good Wi-Fi, if necessary, I can sit in the car and do it. Because, <laughs> you know, we will make a plan. It might be not quite the same, but I'm certain you'd rather have a broadcast than no broadcast. Am I right? I think they've got people coming to meet me and everything. Yeah, you can see me driving the neighborhood in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, being friends doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. That's so good. That's what a real friend is. Thank you, Nana. And I would be heartbroken if we lost you, but I understand if that's what happened. Um, well, Chrissy, the thing is that I don't know whether, you know, whether the springs are all rusted and you know where should we, ask rick where do i spray the wd-40 i know i've got to spray it on the on the steps going in but nana <laughs> you know please 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 if you can ask him where do i need to spray the wd-40 you know do i need to do anything for the springs or whatever no you didn't say you didn't say that nana but i um i feared that so that was transference on my part Thank you for mentioning that. All right. We're still working on this new promotions uh, VIP thing. So please understand if you get the email from me, we're not going to bug you with lots and lots of emails. I just want to be able to give the special people who have supported me for so long and those that wish to be advised um, advance warning of anything that's happening or so forth. Sometimes I fear that, you know, we miss in, in letting everybody know because, you know, they don't see it or whatever and i would rather that get you know maybe twice a month just give you a quick update okay so has anybody 
care enough to share, and we're talking about different life hacks. I thought I would start off. Uh, yeah, I know I've got it. Thank you, Nana. Um, I thought I'd start off with what I think I quite by accident ended up being my best hack in a long time. And that was to go to the dollar store and buy yourself some shower hooks. And then use them to hang your clothes. And if you've got anything that's inclined to slip off a hanger, number two for me, um, which this top is, I just put a, a clothes pin peg on it. Good ideas? Yes, sure, Chrissy. That's what we're here for. Hang on. Now, guys, you are going to hear me. You're going to hear me repeat things that you say uh, for the people who might watch this on the rebroadcast, right? So Chrissy's saying, do you need an organization hack for those taco packets or seasoning packet things? Fire us one, Chrissy. We'd love to hear about it. Thank you. Yes, felt hangers would also work to stop it slipping, but if you haven't got them and you haven't got the money for them, clothes pegs work really well. Yeah, good idea. I, I believe, has anybody got a glue gun? Okay, so Chrissy's saying with those taco packets and things, use an office binder clip and a push pin, and then just put it in any cupboard. A great idea. The other thing is that I uh, would like to say, I use, does anybody else have uses for binder clips? I put one on the side of my computer and um, put my glasses into it. Yes, Chrissy's saying, and when you put the those binder clips uh, on, the, when you put the push pin in, put it towards the top of the cupboard because that's normally got a lot of spare space on it. Kerry, we will forgive you and welcome. It's a really great idea. All right. So, all right. Anybody else got a use for binder clips? I'm trying to think what I, oh, by the way, if you haven't got a binder clip, Okay, I can tell we're going to have to slow this down. Everybody stop giving good ideas for a second, otherwise I'm going to miss them. <laughs> Hang on a second. Um, if you haven't got a binder clip and you need one, do, you, do, you, do you, have you got any uh, clothes, those plastic clothes hangers that you get from Walmart and whatever? You know, those ones that they have for pants and things, you can actually break the ends off them and they're binder clips right there. Oh, Kerry, I'm so pleased. Kerry's had the repairman there, and apparently the heat is working again. Well done, Kerry. I'm pleased to hear it. Yes, and I also use it as for chip for for a binder uh, for chips as well. You see, excellent. Okay, now let me see what Layla said. Layla says I have a hack. I put a paper towel with a few drops of peppermint and lemon essential oils on the bottom of my trash cans to help with odors. It smells great. Give it a try. Very good idea. Uh, I'm trying to think what I do that's like that. And everybody, let me know what you do that, that's similar. I actually put a paper towel in the bottom and I spray it with, um, uh, you know, Febreze type stuff. Hi, Pat. Good to see you again. So that's, I just thought I'd say that. And I've actually sometimes just put the paper towel and squirted some Lysol on there as well. So good. That's a good one. Anybody else got a garbage can type hack? Yeah, it actually does work, it does work surprisingly well. Hmm. Did any of you know that you can make bread without, you can make bread without um, yeast? Yeah, and you know how to make essential oils last really a long time? <laughs> Just take a, a water bottle and, and put some in there and shake it up. It makes it last a lot longer. I actually have found a couple of things. Oh, yes, that's true, Chrissy. And if you put uh, binder clips on the side, 
uh, it works really well. And, you know, and have any of you got the command hooks on the side? I, I didn't want to ruin my the look of my um, trash can. Who says that? Seriously, Sal, who says I didn't want to ruin the look of my trash can? Oh, Jody, I forgot to say we're into the main subject here. Can you sort of <laughs> take it back about five minutes so I'll know where to start looking? Um, <laughs> so the... the I've seen it where some people put command hooks this way, okay, this this way, no, this way, on the side of the of the uh, garbage can, and then what they do is they put the bag on and hook the hook the handle to keep it in place. I actually do need that sometimes. So that's a very good one as well. You see, I knew you guys would have some great ideas. Now here's one from me. I have found that sometimes, and this is really weird, sometimes you can go to the dollar store and buy things cheaper. You, you know, buy things that are already value added, and you can buy that cheaper than you can buy the original. For example, some of you know that I am an artist, and I thought I should just quickly share my picture of the week. Uh, hang on a second. And just remind me to go back to canvases afterwards, please, Jody. All right. So as you may know, I always start with smaller bits of paper to see how it's going to look. I really like those colors together. So I like that. I started with half that size. Hang on. We'll hang on with the good, good ideas here, guys. Otherwise, I'll miss them. And so I ended up doing this one. And by the way, this isn't on canvas. And Nana, here's a tip for you. This is melamine board. Yeah, I got caught up with them as well, I'm afraid, Jody. <laughs> so you, melamine board is an incredibly cost-effective way to, to, to do. I'm glad you like it, Layla. You see, I want to be able to put stuff like that onto your newsletter. So, hey, if anybody wants this, it's about to go into the store. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back. Uh, yeah, to keep the liner in place. That's right, Chrissy. That's exactly what it is. All right. So Chrissy also uses command hooks for her hair for her hair dryer in her cupboard. And on my wait a minute, on your dressing table for your eyelash curler, you just hang it on there. Okay, so let's see. Nana says, you know how you have a hook on, on your bathroom or bedroom door? I get a hanger with lots of hooks and hang it on the hook on the door. Yes, I, I've got I've got over I've got over the door ones with six on them or something. But you're saying that a bit like this idea, all right, which is you can make a plan. All right, so let me see what Kerry was up to there. You went to bargain shopping yesterday. Don't put any more hints in yet, people. I'm trying to read them. <laughs> went bargain, bargain shopping, got two shirts and a pair of pants for seven bucks. How she does this, I have no idea. Um, yes, send me the picture, Nana, and give me permission to share it, and I will. So the same as I do this to make a lot more space in my closet, um, use the back of your doors. By the way, how many of you use shoe, those, uh, those shoe holders for things that other than shoes? Yeah, Kerry is, is the stealth bargain shopper. Makes you wonder where she goes, right? Resale shops, really. Actually, do you know something? I actually bit the bullet not so long ago when I was doing downsizing, and I took some of my cl clothes to an upmarket type reseller, and they took quite a few of them. I was quite surprised. <laughs> so don't don't be too scared to do that. Anyway, here I was telling you the story. Hang on a second. 
Hang on a second. Let me just finish that story about the dollar store. I paint a lot. Hang on, people. Let me go get it. Thank you, Jody. I, I hadn't got the heart to ask you. Um, I really like this 10 by 10 size, all right? But guess what? I bought this as a gallery frame with a picture on it in the dollar store for four bucks. It already had a picture on it. I just, I, I just threw another painting over the top of it painted the back, threw that over the top. And, you know, a gallery canvas like this, I, I couldn't buy it for four bucks in Amazon. Do you understand? So sometimes buying something that's already made is cheaper. You know, for example, you know, sometimes by going to the garage sales and picking up uh, a couple of old frames, you know, that people have got posters or whatever, is cheaper than there. So here's the other thing. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks, is it, Nana? <laughs> it's taken me a year of a lot of paint and a lot of other things. Flavored coffee creamer for oatmeal. That's clever. Pat, that's peaches. Pat, that's very clever. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, I. Um, the other thing I was going to say is, do any of you use nail glue? You know, for when you split a nail? Or maybe you don't split nails like I do. Uh, because I found if you buy it in the... <laughs> cosmetic section, it costs you about three times as much as if you go to the hardware section and pick up the same stuff. You're not sure if the circles will work for you? Actually, Sharon, I tried to do that, um, and I ended up uh, horrified at the price of them. So... That's really, but it's a good idea. I'm going to hopefully do a little bit more of that um, during the summer. I want to go to some, um, <laughs> I want to go to some yard sales and see if I can find, you know, posters and stuff like that. Plus, I'm also trying to learn how to do my own framing. How many of you can see me doing that? I've got all the tools, people. You know that, right? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well done, Nana. So, how many of you are bad about eating breakfast? I mean, Kerry, I, I want to tell you something that you are absolutely incredible um with how you you thrift shop and you know that i must admit that i i admire somebody that can do it as well as you do okay so you're horrible at eating breakfast well here's what i've been doing for the longest time thank you chrissy i really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you that's so cute of you every bit helps pay for the <laughs> um the i have I have uh, just a routine. I buy the Quaker oatmeal packages, you know, the small ones. I huck that into my magic bullet. I turn it on just so it pulverizes it all. I then add half a banana or some frozen cherries or something and a, about a cup and a half of milk. Blend it. Thank you. Breakfast. I've got grains. I've got fruit. And I've got dairy. So do, do you understand? It's it's like, it's a, a very quick way. And by the way, Kerry, one thing I was going to say, um, it wouldn't let you put more. Don't, 
it, I've, I, I've never seen that. We've had that. We've certainly had more than that donated. So, never mind. <laughs> we'll test it out sometime. So here's the thing. Um, do you understand that to me is my go-to breakfast? And Kerry, if you put oatmeal in milk, even if it's um, you know powdered milk and water in your fridge overnight, it'll go all creamy overnight. You know what I mean? I actually don't cook my oatmeal. I take it raw. So that's not what she's saying, Nana, please. Okay, Beth, thank you. Um, yes, so just so that you know, you can just put the raw oatmeal and some milk into the fridge overnight and overnight it will absorb uh, the moisture and then be really creamy oatmeal or porridge whatever you want to call it by the morning and I that's really good and then you just tuck it into the blender with some fruit and you've got a very healthy balanced sort of breakfast anybody like that idea all right who else has got an idea to share Yeah. So, <laughs> hi, makeup. Good to see you. Yeah. So, so here is the thing, right? So far, what have you heard that you like most? What, what, if anything, that we've talked about, did you go, wow, I never thought of that. Let me do that. Now, I've got a, a couple, plus while you guys are typing that, I've got a couple to do with the dishwasher. Anybody got any dishwasher ones? It's a great time saver, Chrissy. It's a really great time saver. And then I, I, I don't think I could live without my magic bullet thing, right? The creamer in the oatmeal is a great idea, isn't it? I, I never use that creamer, but I definitely use, excuse me, I use powdered milk for my lattes, for my coffee. <laughs> you can see in there, that's powdered milk uh, in a steamer, and it works really well. I, I never thought to add that. All right. So any dishwasher one. I have two of them. Number one, I keep my, what do you call, scrub brush uh, in the dishwasher the whole time. I only take, you know, when it, if I need my scrub brush, I take it out of the dishwasher, use it, and put it back on the in the dishwasher. Why is that a good idea? It's always sanitized. <laughs> gets washed every night I also just so you know I also put my sponge in every night you know it's there the whole time until I use it when I use it I put it back um, and you you'll be surprised how long a sponge will last it lasts longer doing that than you know when they get all yuck and ugh enough forget that all right. So the other thing I do in my dishwasher. Oh, do any of you use your dishwasher for washing things other than dishes? I've got a wonderful story on this one. <laughs> I used to have a friend of mine who was, <laughs> who, who was, um, what do you call it? A special events person who who went on, you know, caterer. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I watched her warm up a complete meal in the dishwasher. Do you want to know how? <laughs> Do 
Yeah, exactly. And what she did, you know, you wrap everything in foil, put it in the dishwasher, turn it on, boom. <laughs> I, I just about, yeah, exactly. You can use it as a steamer. Now, part of me goes, I wonder what would happen if you put your, I have put my dishcloths in there. Have you ever done that? I've actually put my dishcloths in there to, 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 if they're a bit yuck, and I don't really want to put them in the wash looking like that, I'll put them in the dishwasher first. All right. Now, the other one, how many of you, oh, we've got a couple, Jody's favorite, this one, but I've got a couple, and one of them has to do with, thank you, Leila, I really appreciate that. <laughs> I was so pleased to see you here. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so if you use lemons at all, two things, lemons. Number one, I take the ends off and I do two different things with them. One end I put in my dish, my garburator to keep that healthy because you understand lemon is a sanitizer as well. The other end I put into the uh, basket in my dishwasher because lemon is good for sanitizing and it's also great smell and everything else. So I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> Anybody else got a dishwasher hack? How many of you make your own dishwashing powder? Anybody? Not getting a reaction to that. Yes, lemon and salt to get tough stains out, including laundry stuff. <laughs> yeah, get Lionel as a dishwasher. Yeah, that's a good tip. Um, so now I saw something. For those, how many of you know Benji? Ah, Sharon is a couponer, so she gets her dishwasher stuff for cheap. Well done, Sharon. I've got to learn to coupon. I've never done that. And now that I'm retired, I probably need to. All right. You, Chrissy, you don't know Benji? Well, he's 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 the reason I'm here. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he was the one that walked into my house one day and said, I need to share you with the world and, and went to my computer, asked me for the passcode and I gave it to him and he went blah, 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 and then he went, okay, now you're, a, you're done. And I said, I'm done. What? He said, you're a YouTuber. I said, I have no idea what that means, honey. And he said, no, but you'll find out. <laughs> and look at us, right? Okay. So I got to give Benji a hint. Yes, Leila, thank you. I'm so glad that, that you got to meet me that way. I'm hoping to see them when they get back from Japan. Um, I'm going to do a special trip and stay longer so I can pop in and give them a hug. So here is a thing I sent to Benji. I found it when I was busy researching for something. Do any of you use stain, uh, fry pans that stick when they're not meant to? And here is what I found. It's the most peculiar thing, especially for stainless steel. <laughs> he pimped me. <laughs> well, you know, I've, it, Chrissy, um, I've known him since he was 18. You know, and I can honestly say I knew him when, right? And I look at him now and I just shake my head and go, that is amazing. So. Here is the trick. Anybody want this one for stainless steel fry pans to make sure they don't stick? I'm not going to waste your time if nobody's got one. Now, I don't know if this would also work with non-stick pans, but it probably is worth a try if you're having problems. Okay. You're not going to believe it, but it works. All right? You take some green onion tops, you know, the, the, the green onions, and you just chop them up. 
you put some oil into your pan, probably from what I could see about a tablespoon or two, right? And hi, Becca. Uh, and you throw the onions into the oil and you cook the onions, making sure that you go all around the pan, all right, and up the sides and everything like that. And you just literally fry the onions in the pan for a little while. And then what you do is when the onions are just about done, you just quietly take them and put them aside and wipe out the pan with the paper towel. And you've got yourself a non-stick pan. Now, obviously, if you're cooking something like an omelet, that's awesome because you also get, then you can just throw the omelet in there. And I'm not joking, it works. Now, the thing was, I saw that and immediately I thought of Benji. And this is why I love sharing ideas because you think everybody knows about these things, but no, not everybody does, right? And I wrote to him and I said, honey, you probably know about this already, but check this out if you haven't seen it. I want to tell you his response to me was probably one of the most endearing responses I've had in a long time from him. You could tell it blew his mind <laughs> that it worked the way that it does. And he has got the most beautiful, as you can imagine, he's got the most beautiful stainless steel pans. And what made me think of him was that I've seen him spend hours cleaning them beautifully, because you know, it's Benji. Um, where you and I would think it was clean, Benji will spend another half an hour on it, you know, because <laughs> you know, it's Benji. So, yes, so Chrissy, try it. And by the way, if any of you want to try it and let me know how it worked for you, I'd be delighted to hear. Now, what else? Uh, anybody got a steamer? You know, um, like a rice cooker. I use my rice cooker for all sorts of things other than steaming rice. Um, I'm not sure what sort of coating. What sort of coating has yours got, Beth? I've got that you know, non-stick black stuff on mine. Now, I want to tell you that if there are one or two of you, it makes the greatest mini fry pan. And what I quite often do is if I am cooking a stir fry or something, I will literally cook all the vegetables in the steamer first and then put them aside and then cook the rice <laughs> and then combine them. That makes sense. But it really does make a really good uh, quick fry pan and that's non-stick. What else do I use mine for? Um, I haven't done bread in it, but I've heard people cook bread in it. I haven't tried that yet. Oh, I was going to tell you about baking bread. Do any of you bake your own bread? Um, I actually find that you can, hang on, the firm rubber shelf liners, when transporting cakes or dishes or food, I put a liner in the car under the dishes so they don't slide. Yeah, you were talking about the rubbery matting, right? That's Sharon giving us that tip. That rubber matting stuff has a lot of uses as well. No doubt about it. Um, do I still stream on tiny chat? Um, slugs, I haven't done in the last couple of weeks because I was having so many problems with both Vaughn and tiny chat. So for a month, I thought we would try, um, YouTube to see what the quality was like, what the, whether we had problems with trolls, which, you know, is always a problem. Um, and so forth. And so what we wanted to see was what were the advantages of using YouTube and what were the disadvantages? So I still will probably go back to YouTube. Um, 
thank you very much for letting us know. Um, I personally, I think that, you know, if we want to do um, a broadcast where people come up on camera, then we can do that in Hangouts as well. I just am really, you know, I got really tired of not having the control that I would have liked uh, on Tiny Chat and on Vaughn. You know, either you've got to cut everybody out. What I love, I love the filters on YouTube. I, you know, they're, they love the quality. I love, you know, the fact that my audience is here on YouTube anyway. So why wouldn't I be here? So to me, it's a, it's a really important shift. And I know it's, you know, it's a change. So that, that's what we're doing. We're trying it. And I knew that unless we try, I was a bit scared about doing the broadcast on YouTube, quite honestly. Um, but quite honestly, it hasn't been an issue. Right? We, we've had some new people come in, but not that many. So it's you know really just the same group that we've always had, plus a few more. And we've had a few people that we haven't seen for a while, which is wonderful. I love that. Okay. So anybody got any tips? Uh, oh. Hi, Pat. Good to see you. You might want to refresh. Pat, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, because sometimes just refreshing will fix it. Pen, I think I've still got the right pen, Jody. Yeah, I got it here somewhere. <laughs> What's everybody's favorite thing to cook in? You're talking about clothes? <laughs> Rick says, if it doesn't move, oil it. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. You oil rather than, you're saying oil rather than WD-40. Okay. Yes, there are two of them, actually, that are up there. I also painted the big one on the wall. That's there. <laughs> in fact, every painting in my house, I think I have done. Um, oh, don't I use WD forty on my stair, on my steps that go into my. Yeah, thank you, Nana. I appreciate that. All right. Yes, I've heard a lot of people talk about this Instapot. Um, so how many of you have them? Hi, Andy. You're going on tour tomorrow. That's exciting. Where are you going? I should put that down so we can add it to the uh, updates for Sunday. Where are you going, Andy? Hi, Erin. Good to see you. That's okay, Becca. We don't need you to talk, honey. Just sending you a hug. It's good to see you here. Um, I'm also... I use WD-40 to get... Uh, I write on my mason jars before, you know, what's in, on, in them when I freeze them. And uh, I use WD-40 to get the marker off. So that's another one. Ah. So you're going to a bunch of different states. That's wonderful, Andy. Well, we wish you lots of luck. Will you be able to let us know how you're doing? And, and what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be playing or managing or... For those of you who don't know, Andy is uh, a gamer. It's so exciting. I remember when you were going to quit, Andy. <laughs> yeah. 
That is awesome. What fun. Two things you love to do, right? Well, you see, this is the whole thing. I'm a great believer is you never know where the road is going to lead you. All right? And I wonder if you'd be doing that if you had quit on the gaming. <laughs> you see, I, that's the way I look at it. It's just like you really never, never know. There you go, Beth. That one is a magic one. 70% rubbing alcohol with your favorite essential oil in a spray bottle for an air freshener. What a great idea. Ah, uh, Andy, I want to tell you something. We had some incredible people. If any of you get a chance, if you weren't at the noon broadcast, um, I want to tell you there wasn't a dry eye on the noon broadcast broadcast at one point um and including me i was crying and i'm crying even thinking about it uh but you know it was amazing how uh, those of you who remember linda in the uk her son nicholas had sent me a message and it, it, it really did it, it touched my soul um Oh, I want to tell you, I, I, I really was, I, it, it just, it was just so amazing when you think uh, how far he has come. Uh, it, it just, you know, I, it, it really touched my soul. And so I really do thank you all because, yeah, he's autistic. That's right, Becca. Yeah. Um, he thanked me for helping his mommy. It was, it really was. I mean, it, you had to be there, I guess, but that's why I'm, you know, if you if you want to see what that reality was, it really, it was quite something. And, you know, I was remembering, you know, how Linda was. She was a real victim when we first met her. And, you know, she's given up smoking and she's, you know, put down boundaries and she's done all sorts of things. And she was saying that, you know, it was just that coming to the chats and listening to other people's stories and listening to me help other people and helping her. And every now and then I also, you know, I gave her a two by four. But it, it, it was absolutely amazing. It is, Andy. You're right. Well, <laughs> Andy, you know, sometimes you need somebody that cares that much. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not it's it's not about that I know it all because I sure as heck don't. Uh, yes, Nana, you're correct. Uh, and he he he's autistic, so. But it was, I want to tell you, it really did touch my very soul. The, the, she, I think he sent about three messages, and I literally, I lost it. It was really weird. Um, so I'm happy to have that show. That's okay. This is what I like about, this is what I like about YouTube. YouTube, if there's something that comes up that it thinks is a problem, it will hide it from you and give me the choice with it to show the comment or not. Uh, Andy, it didn't like your kick my ass bit. So, you know, now I can decide, is that okay? Is that all right in the broadcast? And I think it is, right? And I love it that it does that. Do you think... She did. I, I Oh, okay. Nana, you're still on the same subject. Okay. Uh, I actually think that, yes, because nobody knows who she is. They know she's Linda from the UK. I mean, really. So I, I think so. But I understand your point, and I know it comes from a good place because it's you, Nana. So, but what I want you to know is that it really was, for any of you who want to have your soul shifted a bit, make sure you have a look at that rebroadcast. Um, so here is the thing. 
Anybody else got any other um, hacks that you want to share? Anything from your closet? I'm trying to think what hacks I've got in my closet, if any. I don't think I've ever given you one, Erin, because I've always stood in awe of you. And you've always been so accountable. I've never heard you blame. I've never heard you be bitter. You know what I mean? You, you, you as, yes, that is our Aaron. You know, it's it, <laughs> carry two by fours you all the time. All right. Well, I've never had reason to, I don't think. Well, thank you so much, Leila. I look forward to seeing you again. And thank you for finding us on the broadcast. And it, it's, it's wonderful to see you here. Well, yeah, Andy, but you made the choice to walk back away from that, you see? And that's the interesting thing, that I can I can give you the two by four and give you the reality check. You had to decide to do something about <laughs> I am. <laughs> I ripped you a new one. <laughs> well, I, I was a little scared. And by the way, if you want to know who I ripped a new one for, it was Lauren. Uh, and Jody will tell you that um, because everything I heard that was happening to Lauren was a major problem and she wasn't doing anything to get attention. So I, I literally, um, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you know, it's, it's very important. It's a fine line and you have to hope that it works. You're being thrown out of your place. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm certain you'll... You know something, Andy? I'm a great believer that you will make a plan. Yeah, you're not too worried, right? you got confidence back. You'll make a plan. So... Well, you know something? I, I know you're not perfect, Erin. I, I, I know enough about you to know you're not perfect. But I do know something, that for all that you cope with, you are one of the most courageous people I know, and you have a better attitude than 99% of the people that I know. So I think that deserves to put you on a little bit of a pedestal. That's my choice. I have that right. I don't put you there thinking you're perfect, because I don't. Okay, I just know you've inspired so many viewers here. Um, and, you know, that, you, you know that. It's like, I look at Leslie, you know, I look at Jody. Look at Jody does. All right, Jody, how many hours sleep did you get through pain and everything else last night? Um, for those of you who don't know, Jody suffers from something called lymphedema, which was the result of the radiation and everything she had after cancer. Um, Jonas, what would you like to know about pouring art? Right, so Jody had one and a half hour sleep last night. And do you know what the first thing was she said to me this morning? I'm, I'm awake. I'm going to help you with both broadcasts. All she could focus on was not how little sleep she'd had, but that she'd be there to, you know, to be my admin for the broadcast. Go figure that one. Um, okay, so just so I know, Jonas, what, what do you want to know? I would say my number one tip would be have fun. Keep experimenting with things. I think I did this one with hair oil. I'm not 100% sure. But I think this was coconut hair oil that I did this with. 
<laughs> right? Um, and I think that you need to be an experimenter rather than a perfectionist. You know, you don't want to be what I call a perfect artist to do, to do this. This one I did with WD-40. Hang on a second. WD-40 and something else. Oh, a bit of silicone oil, I think. And I use my heat, heat gun like a blow dryer. Can you see that? So how can I help you, Jonas? I, I want to tell you that, as a lot of people have found out, it looks really easy. And it's not nearly as easy as it looks, is, is my truth on, on it. Where is the pink? You're, I've got one with pink here. You want the pink one? Hang on. I got one for you. I'm certain everybody will forgive me. I don't get to see Erin very often. Erin, that one's got pink in it. Okay. And so does this one. Are you happy now, Erin? <laughs> I want to tell you something, Nana. Um, I have done a lot, and I have wasted an incredible amount of paint. I have struggled. I, I've struggled with it. Uh, uh, I've. I, I just thought I would never really get it, and then one day, I just realized it's not about perfection. You know, it is about an expression. And, you know, it's you've got to learn, and you can only do it by, you know, constantly trying. You've got to learn what the right consistency is. You've got to learn that if you're going to mix oil and water, you're probably going to get cells, you know. So you've got to, if you're putting in an oil, a silicone, then you also need to put in some water in the thing. Um, you you need to just and also you need to just let it be. I assure you that when I did, I don't know if any of you have seen my video when I actually threw this, but I remember Nana saying, "Why was I so scared?" It's really scared when scary, quite honestly, for me. You know, you're about to throw a lot of paint onto a piece, and it can end up being a total mess, or it can end up as pretty as this one is. And I do love this one, I must say. Actually, I think I like it better that way. Um, you know, so, and for every one of these you see that turned out well, I've got an awful lot that didn't. And I'm learning now just to throw them away. It's, it's very difficult. Um, I, but the one thing I was saying today, Nana, that's important, I think, and also um, to Jonas, was it? That I throw a lot of pictures on paper. You know, I buy reams of cardstock or I think this actually that I'm using here is just regular um, copy paper because I want to test out what does it look like? You know, what does that bronze look like with that blue? And I really like the combination. I'm also learning to mix different things together. In other words, I will take a green and I will throw a bronze into it, right? And see what what color do I get then? And I really like the look of that, you know? And so to me, it's a perfect hobby for me because it's all experimentation. And just when you think you've got it right, you don't. So it's time to play again. I, I can tell you that it has brought me a great deal of joy and a great deal of relaxation and a great deal of peace. I can go into my studio 
and the time just disappears. It takes me, just so that you know, people, it takes me about two hours just to get the paints ready. <laughs> you know, to, to, to get everything set up and get all the colors mixed and the right consistency and set up. Can you believe that? Take two hours before you even start doing a test run and going, yeah, I don't like that. After all that work, I don't like those colors. I disappear for hours at a time. I do. <laughs> and the sad thing was that I didn't get in there. Now, the reason I didn't get in there to paint this week was because I was in the craft room um, making pop-up birthday cards. Anybody ever wanted to make those? So that was my... And... That's excellent idea, Becca. What a good idea. Yeah, the the video I've I've got actually I've got three lots of video because I got one is the card I did for Jody. I sent her a card for her birthday with one of the paintings I knew she liked in it. Um, and then I've got two pop-up cards that I did. So I will be editing those out and you'll be seeing them over the next couple of weeks if I can just get myself to do that. All right, anybody else got any more hacks while we're here? <laughs> All right, so I just got to tell those of you who are watching this on the replay, Erin just typed in. It seems to always happen that way, Jody, especially with Sal. I ask and I receive the, most of the time. I mean, my gosh, the woman went to Baker for me and almost got left there. Now, for the rest of you who may or may not know the story, I need to tell it. No, I know you didn't, Kerry. Just hold on a second, honey. Let me just finish this. So um, Alice, um, Alice from Denmark, Leah, myself, and Angela all were in Vegas together. We planned a trip. And we went down to, go, we decided we were, you know, close enough to go and visit Erin. And so we planned it with Erin's daddy that we would be coming down. And I want to tell you something. We had to go through, you know, the Mojave Desert to get to her. And, you know, at one point there is this place called Baker. And Baker, am I right, Erin, has the largest thermometer in, in the world, right? And it was reading well over 100. Um, but what happened was we, we all went into the washroom, and when I came out of the washroom, there was nobody there. <laughs> they, they'd all left me. <laughs> and I, quite honestly, it was the sort of place, if, I don't know if any of you can sort of see this visual, but it was the sort of place where you expected to hear the deliverance, you know, dueling banjos music start up because that was the whole feel. For those of you who are old enough to remember that, you know, because I want to you know, or maybe the Jaws music. You know? <laughs> it was scary. And I thought they left me there. And the lady who was in the store, um, the sort of convenience store, she had a haircut and she had, um, oh, it's a pleasure, Jonas. She had um, bangs and they, I think she'd rolled them around a pencil and then taken the pencil out. Well, I want to tell you, I nearly died. I didn't know how. Yes, it looked just like that. That's what we called her Wilma because of that. But literally she had bangs that were like this and then she'd gone like this. But it was tight and it was so ugly. <laughs> it was just like, really? <laughs> but the worst thing about that trip, and I've got to tell you, it was the worst trip. Angela was in the back with me. And for those of you who know Angela, Angela and I are like a comedy routine together. We're very dangerous together. All right. Because we actually don't need to say very much and we just start to crack up. Um, we just find each other very amusing. And I want to tell you something. 
we literally, Angela and I have a little creed that we say about that trip, Erin, as you know. <laughs> we laughed, we cried, we peed. You know, because really, I have never laughed so much in my life on, in one trip. And, you know, eventually we came across this road that you've heard, Shit Creek Road. It wasn't actually called that, but it was called very close to that. And here was the next thing. The other thing was that in that particular part, and Erin, you'll forgive me, but that particular part, you know the rolling tumbleweeds you see in, in the cowboy movies? Well, there was a lot of that going on. So, you know, you expected the stagecoach to come around the corner. Um, and then what I noticed is the closer we got to Erin, for some reason that I haven't quite been able to work out, and maybe Erin can tell me, um, there seemed to be an awful lot of crosses on the intersections, you know, like somebody had died there. And it was like, wasn't one or two. It was like, you know, almost every intersection there was, you know, and it, it gets a bit, it gets a little bit scary, you know, when you've done Baker and, and nearly been left there for life, you know, and, and then you, you sort of wait for the dueling banjos music. And then, and then you start seeing the rolling tumbleweed and you're going, I do not want to break down here. <laughs> Because it really is scary. So, but I want to tell you something. It's like all things in life. The journey was half the story, Aaron, right? I mean, the fact that I got to meet you and sit on your bed and drink in your goodness, and that's what I feel I did. Um, you know, and, and to see the look on your daddy's face when we actually did arrive, it was amazing. Um, and he was so kind to us. Yeah, he really was. He cooked this incredible meal. I was talking about it at lunchtime. He really did. He cooked this incredible meal for us. And, you know, we 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 blasted in there like a thunderstorm. Can you imagine? Ange and Sal and Leah, you know, those are three not quiet people. <laughs> yeah, and that would be putting it very mildly. And, you you know, and bless her heart, um, Alice, you know, was the only sane person in the room. And, you know, you put the, th the three <laughs> noises together. It was a lot of noise in there. But I want to tell you something, and I want to tell everybody this, the look on her face when we walked in. It was worth everything. It was worth Baker, the tumbleweed, the intersections. Yeah, it was it was the most amazing. Uh, I, I'm yeah, you know, got tears in my eyes now thinking about it. It it was well worth it. And you know something? Yeah, you know, all these years later, it's still yeah, it's one of my fondest memories of actually doing Dear Mama Sal. The, the dueling banjos. I want to tell you something. I really did expect that to be happening any minute now. And the thing was that Angie, Angela and I. <laughs> Andrew and I, you know, we we just we just couldn't keep ourselves from crying with laughter for just about the whole trip. It must have been very frustrating. Leah wasn't very well. And it was just like we were in the back seat howling, howling. And you know, Angela is not a good person. Do you know that? <laughs> she can press, you know, she can press buttons that make me laugh when I least want it. Um, and just with a look, she's really good. And, you know, the funny thing was, you know, we were in Vegas and I didn't go to the casinos. I had no wish to do that. But we were in Vegas, you know, and she and I'd be sitting down in a coffee shop having a coffee because, you know, Leah and 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 uh, Alice were off buying makeup or something. And she and I went to go and do something else. And she literally talked to the people next door and she was going, you know who she is? <laughs> you know, do you know who she is? You know, that's dear Mama Sal. You know, and the people would be going, what? <laughs> yeah, she's on YouTube, you know. <laughs> you know and it was just like so funny. <laughs> and I go, I am so sorry. No, 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 really. <laughs> and I'm saying, you know, she, she gets a bit excited, you know. <laughs> but she, I want to tell you that Angela was a wonderful hostess. You know, she did a really great job of, you know, of taking us around Vegas and showing us things. And it was, it was really fun. It was, as you say, good memories, Aaron. Um, so Aaron, how far are you away from your 
home that you had. And how is Daddy doing? That's the other question I wanted to ask you. I know Daddy went, took the RV and is off exploring other parts. So how is he doing? It, it, I want to tell you, it was a it was a trip a trip that I think all of us remember very well. It wasn't all easy either. You know, you can't put four. You, know, you can't sort of put everybody together from different backgrounds, different um, realities. And, and you know, there were some moments there that weren't so much fun, but you know something? It's part of the memory for me, is that we literally had this incredible experience. Anyway, it was fun. <laughs> it was a great, by the way, we we rented a house and it was like, Incredible. It, it, there were four of us in the house and we all had our own bathroom. Yes, Becca got to meet Jenny Jen Jen, for those of you who ever met Jenny Jen Jen. And I think that's another wonderful story where, what was it, Becca? She'd, ne she'd never had fresh milk. Or was it you that had never had fresh milk? One of you had never had fresh milk, I seem to remember. Oh, that was when Jen met Jess. That's right. That is absolutely right. Yes, sorry, Becca. Um, you're right. That was Jessica. Yeah. Anyway, those two met up, and I think it was Jess took fresh milk for Jenny Jen Jen because she hadn't had it. You know, fresh milk off the farm, unpasteurized, anything, you know, just like this is raw milk. This is what it looks like and tastes like. And I thought that was really kind. And then Becca and Jenny Jen Jen met up. And the funny thing is, Becca stands, how, how tall are you, Becca? I want to say five foot eight or nine. Five, seven, you're my height. Okay. But I want to tell you, next to Jenny, Jen, Jen, she looked like a giant. <laughs> we, we had pictures of Becca up here and Jenny, Jen, Jen down here somewhere. It, it was, it was an, you know, you didn't realize the height difference until you saw the pictures. You've grown another inch. Wow. Really? That's unusual because that's only because you're already an adult. That's unusual to grow an inch as an adult. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Wow. Has anybody else heard of that? Hmm. Oh, by the way, I, I'm just thinking about another hack. Um, I realized that it was getting very close to broadcast time. Yes, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it does seem interesting. Okay, here's another hack. I, I was getting close to broadcast time, and I realized I hadn't had dinner, and that's not a good thing. So um, just very quickly, I had half a can of beef and vegetable soup that I had earlier in the week, and I literally just crumbled in some ramen noodles and, and put it in the microwave and let it steam. And I want to tell you something. I had beef, you know, I had meat and vegetables, and pasta and it was it was amazing how quick it was to do and very nice to eat yeah i think you know but i i suppose you're right i i just can't remember growing much after mid 20. how old are you now becca because i think you're maybe I, maybe you're younger than i remember Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, that's what I thought. You're the, you're, you're the other side of 25 now, right? So 
that's why I was surprised that I, if you if you I can imagine people doing that from twenty to twenty five, but not from after twenty five. So that goes to show. Maybe maybe it, my memory is wrong. I just never. I can't remember hearing it. <laughs> five foot five and a half inches. <laughs> when you jump up and down. <laughs> so I really just want to tell you that this is. <laughs> Hi, Canada. Um, this is really an exciting stuff for me. We're going to be sending out these emails to you just so that you know. Uh, I have to send out the emails and get your permission to keep you on the list uh, because a lot of you have written to me over the years. So I have you in my mailing list. But I want to make sure that I have permission to send you, um, you know, a newsletter. And, and that's I, I need that by international law. You know, they're trying to make sure people don't spam people. So if you do get the email, please respond. Um, thank you, Kerry. I did send that to you today. You were, you're on the list anyway, but you were a bit lower down the list. That's why you hadn't got it yet. But I decided to put you at the top of the list today. Um, the other thing is that I, yes, you write to me. Um, hang on a second. Let me type that in. Um, you write to me at Dear Mama Sal. Oops. I'm sure you'll work that out. <laughs> a little bit of a touch the return by accident in there. Um, but, you know, put those two things together, you got it. Dear Mama Sal at gmail.com. And just put in the subject, um, put in the subject, yes to the list. Okay. It's, you could see the angle my computer's at. You'll see why I'm struggling here. Okay. And just put yes to the list because that's easy for me to see. And then I'll literally take it and add you to the, um, yeah, you want to be on the mailing list. That is awesome. I mean, they're two different, if you like, if you can imagine it, I got two different lists. One is the list of anybody who's ever written to me because you have written to me. The other is those that would like to have updates on what we have going into the shop, what paintings I'm about to release, you know, and, um, you know, what we're doing with the, with the um, Dear Mama Sal thing. Also, I will be sending you requests. Please update me. Tell me what you'd like to see me talk about. Um, I'm going to do a trip and I, a couple of trips coming up. And I know you all like it when I do those. How many of you like, um, hmm, what do you like most for those of you who are regulars? What do you like most uh, when I do the trips? When you think, oh, Sal's going to do another trip. What, what do you know you're going to get that you enjoy? Let me put it that way. Because I think sometimes I don't even know what it is that you guys enjoy. Because <laughs> I just, you know. Anybody? You like the sightseeing and the food? Well, Erin, there are some paintings up on the... Um, Yeah, I, there are some on, on the website already. You know, the dearmamasal.com has a shop tab on it. You can see there's some in there. But these ones that I've got here will be, I'll be taking pictures of them and putting them up. Um, yeah, how many of you enjoy the people I meet? I, I'm going to be staying with some really nice people on this first trip. Uh, I'm going back to Whitby Island, and that was where I took um, Big Brother Jeff. Now, the first trip I'm doing, I'm not going to take the trailer. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go down there um, because I've got to concentrate on doing a speech and things. So I don't want to worry about um, the trailer. Um, and I've got people that have invited me to stay with them. So, but 
you know, they're interesting people and it's an interesting area. It's all right, Kerry, we all have those days. You are allowed to be cranky. <laughs> For goodness sake, you have dealt with me when I'm cranky. So I give you permission. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and then I'm going to get really brave and hook up the trailer. And then it sounds stupid that I'm going to come all the way back and then hook up the trailer and take, go all the way back to where I was. But there is method in my madness. The first trip, I cannot afford to have a problem, all right, because I'm speaking. Um, therefore, you know, I don't want to have to worry about what if the trailer goes wrong, whatever. The second trip is purely I'm going down for a wedding and I'm, it's close to where Benji and Judy live. So if something happens, you know, I can pick up a phone and get some help. <laughs> So, you know, to me, it's like, you know, pick your battles. So I've got a lot of traveling coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that's really, really important for me. And so I better, oh, I better buy some travel insurance. And I also need to check my passport, right? I think it's fine. <laughs> You got family coming over, Becca. Becca, when are you going away and how long are you going away for? Actually, can I share that with the peeps that you're going away? Taking some you time. That would be quite normal, Becca. You you're gonna have I, I don't know how to say this nicely, Becca. Um, but you're going to have about a year of this. Jonas, I have been to Edmonton. I have done a number of speeches in Edmonton, actually, in the day. Um, I've also been to Calgary. I've also been to Banff. I've also been to... Hang on a second. There's another one. Which one am I not thinking of? What's near... What is near Edmonton? Something else where I've been. I haven't made glassware look like mercury, but it's very easy to do, I hear. You just spray. Ah. So, Canada, you're from BC as well. Yeah, I'm actually going to be going down into Washington State, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but... You've probably, you know, yeah. What am I thinking? What's close to Edmonton that isn't Edmonton? Red Deer? Now, the other thing is um, I wanted to know when I do these trips, do, would you like to see a map so you can see what I'm up to? Yeah, Sharon, that's what I was going to say. It's just you just spray mirror paint inside and with some vinegar. Yeah. Yeah, I you know, I've even done Manitoba and 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 yeah, I've been right across the country. <laughs> yes, Hell's Gate. Oh, he's gate. Hell's Gate. I've been to Hell's Gate. Yeah, I, that's what I read actually. <laughs> so you'd like to see me do some sightseeing stuff this this summer i'm going to be a little busy yes i was wondering about whether i should you know ha have a map and see if i can get a visual of a car and make it travel not there pat i'm not allowed to come there Well, you know, Canada, here's the thing. I, I know my audience pretty well. You know, they they, they actually, <laughs> they're, they're a lot like me in a lot of ways, right? They, they enjoy little things. You know, I not, haven't been there yet. Please put yet, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now I'm thinking uh, on on the second trip that I do that I'm going to try and meet Sakura. Yeah, Becca, that must be really sad to hear. Well, I I have met some. <laughs> so. Becca, you know, one of the best things that your mommy can do is to cry. You know, it, it releases so much of the emotion. And she will, again, she will need to do that for quite some time, as will you all. And for those of you who don't know, um, Becca lost a brother recently, and they're all grieving. So, uh, you know, there are going to be times that things trigger you and, you know, bring up those waves of grief. And I really know that it's a good thing. The more that you have them happen, the more you will work through your grieving. Hang on. Oh, you'd like to hear more about my memory stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about the Martin Luther King Day and that speech I gave on Martin Luther King Day. And it was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that day very well because <laughs> it's not a holiday here, obviously. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, there's something weird about grieving, um, Becca, that, you know, you, you've heard me say it many times. It's a cycle and you need to know it's OK. It, it, it Yeah, it hurts like hell. Exactly. Um, it's interesting that they don't mind the word hell. They didn't like ass, but they don't mind the word hell. Interesting, Sharon. Um, so there is no shortcut. You know, there is no shortcut to grieving. You just have to work your way through it. And the strangest thing, I think, about grieving that I can tell you, Becca, is that you think that you're just doing fine, and somebody can just give you a look or they will cough, or they'll scratch their face or do something. And it's just like the floodgates open. And you need to know it's okay. Yes, that's a very good point, Kerry. Somebody came in wearing your aunt's... Huh, your aunt's perfume. That would do it. It's a trigger. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I want to tell you something, uh, Nana, that you probably, you probably will, you know, that, that's a major moment in your life. All right? It's, it's like a, um, an intersection of your life. It could have gone either way. And you're just so grateful that he lived. So that's get, that's what they call um, a milestone, if you like, um, moment of your life. And I heard something the other day. Um, and funny enough, I, I, I every now and then I watch a Dr. Phil episode. And I was watching an old Dr. Phil episode. And he said something that I thought was really relevant. And what he said was, look back in your life and see what you remember. And I thought, yeah, so? And he said, the things that you remember about your life will be the things that were had major impact on your life. I thought that was really interesting. Right. We, we don't we're inclined not to remember lots of stuff, but the stuff we really remember, if you really look at those things, you can remember they were absolutely cornerstones of, of you know, where you change parts, where you where, you know, you you felt, you know, this level of grief where you were betrayed, where, you know. 
Well, you see, Nana, you have to accept that, you know, I, I quite honestly, Nana, I don't think you ever do. You know, I, I, um, I am going to give my example because I don't need you to give yours because I, I want to make sure I protect you here in terms of your um, stuff. But, you know, I look at it and go, whatever has happened to me, I have found out that it's always going to be there. The tape is in my head. The I like to think of it as how well can we lock it away into a vault and not open it up unless we want to. Because I think that is what the trick is. It's, it is, I don't want to be revisiting it every day. I don't want to live my life remembering this. Um, and I know you've got stuff in your life, Nana, that, that, that really hurt you to this day. And, you know, it's like, I understand that. But, you know, lock it away. Yes. And that's the other way. The other way is can you numb yourself to it? Um, and I remember once working with a group of people and they were talking about that where they go, let's say that you get really triggered with the word um, hell. Let's use the word hell. Hi, forever young. Let, let's say that the word hell triggers you. If you really want to help yourself, you want to get all your friends to use that word ad nauseum, you know, use it all the time, because you will desensitize yourself, right? So if you're looking at the difficulty of the first year of grieving for, for Becca or for Kerry or for anybody who's gone through uh, the loss of anything, um, that's very kind of you, Canada. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, the more that the more that you repeat those words, the more that you can get it out. The reason why we do so much good work here uh, on Dear Mama Sal, people are talking about things that they don't normally talk about. They think about them and they feel them, but they don't necessarily openly talk about them for fear of being judged. They'll think I'm stupid if I tell them this, that, and the other. Well, you know. We actually know about these things, and, and a lot of us are survivors. Uh, Canada, are you male or female? You see, I think, you know, there was the whole reason why I started Dear Mama Sal was because I knew that there had to be people out there that were hurting, and there had to be people out there who needed support and I don't mean because they're weird or whatever just because you know life gets pretty darn lonely and especially how many of you feel that you're sort of the odd one out in your family in some way <laughs> you know what I mean you don't quite fit in I'm really glad you came in Canada I appreciate it um you know and I think the important thing to remember is the reason that we don't fit in is because we don't follow the norm, right? We we have different ideas. Yeah, I've always been. Don't worry about the typos, Canada. We read through those. So, you know, it's like the reason we don't fit in is because we are not sheep. That's the way I think it's like, Sarah. You know, we're not sheep, right? We Somebody says, um, go right, we're going, why, why do I need to go right? Yeah, we query things. We, we don't go blindly following everything that everybody says. And I, I always think about Nana. You know, Nana will, will query all sorts of things. And you're thinking, why is, she, why is she asking that? You know, Nana seeks to understand stuff at a whole different level. And I admire that because that's how you learn things. Yeah, I'm an odd duck and I waddle to my own drama. What a beautiful expression. <laughs> what did I hear at lunchtime today that I thought was so good? Of course, if I could read my scribble, it would help. Huh. I can't read what I wrote. I'll find it. Wait, 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 wait. There was this really great thing that somebody said, and I went, wow, I've got to use that.
Uh, I have to get my glasses on to see it. The toolbox, you're quite right. Absolutely right, Kerry. <gasps> and Sharon, how come you guys? Let me write it this time so I can read it. <laughs> Who said it? Well, thank you so much, Canada. I really, really appreciate that. Who who was it that used the toolbox thing? Was it Sharon? Yes, I thought it was. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave you credit for it. Yeah, Sharon said at lunchtime that that what I had done is is, is given people a toolbox and opened it up and said, you know, you got these tools. And what a wonderful quote from Erin. She says that Mark, her daddy, said, never be afraid to question everything and everyone. Don't always just trust what you are told. Gosh, I wish somebody told me that when I was 17 and made me believe it. That I had the right to question. I had the right to disagree. How many of you wish you'd been taught that? I, d I don't know what happened in your family dynamic, but, you know, mine was a bit strange. You know, and if I questioned anything, you know, it was like, you know, <laughs> you don't do that to your elders and betters, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I can I can remember that. By the way, I, I also remember that my mother could give me one look and I would, you know, pick up my plate and leave the room. You know, <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> yeah, not today. No, that wouldn't happen anymore. Quite the opposite. So it took me a long time to understand these things. But, you know, that's why I started Dear Mama Sal, because I thought, gosh, what if I'd been able to discuss these? Yeah, toxic and dysfunctional would be very relevant. But I kept thinking, you know, what, what if we could discuss this and save people years of, you know, insanity, feeling? It took me a long time to realize that I wasn't the one that was actually so wrong. Did any of you find that out? It wasn't that my thinking was so wrong. It was that people got so angry because they couldn't control me, because I chose not to be controlled. Oh, our, we, we did a lot of work with that at lunchtime. Um, plus, we did one, Canada, I don't know if you saw it, the one that we did on, on yeah, it's about boundaries, Canada. That that's we did a was it at lunchtime that we did the boundaries thing again? Um, it's it's like I want to tell you something. You need to get out of if you don't mind my saying so. You don't have to tell us what it is, but the number one thing I tell people who've got toxic people around them is get out of the line of fire, because toxic people will not change because they choose not to. Do you understand that, Canada? Good night, Anna. Thank you so much for your honesty and your love. We appreciate them both, really do. Say hi to Rick for me. I will, I will remember use oil on the rusty bits. Yeah. So you know, it it was about. And um, for those of you who remember Linda from the UK, she was saying, she was saying that one, you know, the, the one of the greatest gifts she got was the fact that she learned how to put down a boundary, and to look after herself. Yeah, and and so, so to me, it's like get out of the line of fire. You know, if somebody is around you that is always picking fights, is always accusing you of stuff, doing whatever, you actually don't have to stay and listen to it. Um, I I literally have had to get out of the line of fire of my sister. Okay, what's Erin saying here? I'm finding out now. People are getting angry because my dad has chosen not to control me and help facilitate my ability to live on my own, on my own life. He always tells them, yeah, what makes you think that? I think what he did personally, and you can tell him, I think what he did was the most loving thing he could do. I really do. I think the fact that he let you fly the fact that he let you fly when he must have been terrified took great courage and great character, in my view. Because he's smart enough to know he's not always going to be here. 
And you do need to learn to find out how much you can do. And that there, you know, you needed to 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 know that you could do it, um, Aaron. You know, that you could have a life without him. That was, I think, that's what a parent's job is. All right. A parent's job is to teach your child everything you can, but most of all to teach them how to fly. You know, it's like birds pushing their young out of the nest. You've got to teach your children to fly. How many of you know that? You know that you you so many parents overprotect their children, and and the children aren't allowed to do things where they could fail, where they could get into trouble, do whatever. And what ends up happening is they don't learn anything. You know, you, you have to allow your children to live their own life once they're adult, and you 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 know I still you know how many young people still phone me all the time. And they'll keep saying, so what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? And I keep saying, I have no idea what you should do because it's your life. But I can give you options. And I'll give them four or five options. And at the end of it, I'll say, what one sounds like one that you would like to do? There, I want to do the right one. I said, I really don't know what the right one is for you. I, you know, it's like you have to make your own decision here. Because if you don't make your own decision, how will you get confidence? Yes, but what else they taught you, right, Aaron? Because they had to teach you that issue, but you need to not be scared to ask for help. Right? If you need help, you need to ask. Are you, how many people, how many people in, in, in on this chat room right now really have a problem asking for help? And look at me. I knew that my biggest bugaboo about downsizing, the biggest problem that I had was what am I going to do with the garage, which was up to the gunnels with stuff. And look what I did. I called three people in to help me. You need help, Canada. Yeah. All right. And what I did is, and I got three guys. Do you know why? Guys do things differently. They're very focused. They just get it done. And they were all wanting to go to the game. So they came in. And what they did in two hours was amazing. Yes, Erin, that asking for help was very difficult to do. Hi, Nikki. Yes, I want to tell you, it took me a long time to realize that asking for help was a sign of strength, not one of weakness. Okay? To clean out my garage would have taken me probably two months of hell. You know, horror stuff. And, you know, with them there, I just said, take it, take it, take it. And inside that voice in my head's going, Sal, you really don't know what was in that box. And I'm going, it's been in there for the last four years at least. If I haven't needed it in four years, it can go. Now, do I think I might have lost some memories? I think, by the way, for those of you who remember the broadcast about the riding crops, the whips, I think the whips went. Ah, so Canada. That is a really important thing for you to understand, right? That you are, Jody is a big one. Jody will be able to help you a lot with this, Canada. You know that you are one of those people that helps everybody, but nobody helps you. Well, do you know why they don't help you? You ride horses too? There you go. Yeah, I want to tell you, you need to hook up with Jody. She'll be a good mentor for you. Yeah, Kerry, very good mentor as well. I don't want to overload the people, but that's what we do here, Canada, is, is we set you up with people who understand what you're talking about because they've done it, been there, done that, survived. Makes sense. It's really important that you understand you're not the only fish in the, this pond, right? That, yeah. So, but, but what we need to do is, uh, okay, so Canada... If you send me an email and say, hi, it's me, Canada, and I needed some help on boundaries and my toxic family, then I know that both Jody and Kerry are really keen to help you on that because they understand, or I have problems asking for help or whatever it is, right? 
then what I will do is I know who to match you up with. And what we do here is, you know, we literally have people who help people so that you get to learn I'm so proud of you, Becca. Becca, I am really, really proud of you. You, you know, you you went back and tried to go to work. You set up to get some counseling. I am really proud. That's looking after you. That's adult behavior. Well done. It was so hard to do, I know. Yep. Well, well I guess, excuse me, Canada, but guess why? Some people want to care and reach out. Guess why, honey? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing at the moment, as you probably know. I'm trying to downsize my life, and it's hell for me. Yeah, we got that. Don't worry about correcting those typos. We read straight past them. And we're very talented at that. So, you see, the reason that we understand it is we've been there. We've been in that place where, you know, you I wanted to reach out and have somebody understand what I was thinking, but, you know, I didn't have anybody. And and so that's what that's why we started this, Canada. We started this so we could talk about stuff like this and hopefully save people from, you know, we, we've had some incredible stories, Canada, ones that would really shake your very being. Um, at lunchtime today, yeah, Becca, we know that. We don't, you know, you, 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 you need to look after you. The most important person you can look after is you. You know, and, and we had the, the, this conversation at lunchtime today where a young man, a young adult man, uh, probably Becca's age, who's autistic, um, asked his mom whether he could talk to me because for some reason he loves my voice and he loves to hear, he, I make sense to him, which is amazing really when you think about it. Well, you know, I, I think, I, I think with all due respect, that stories are easier to understand sometimes than the facts. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd like to say, I, I would like to say that I learned that from somebody a, a lot more important than myself. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I keep thinking about the parables. The parables told stories that made sense. Um. And to so to me, I like to tell stories about things because I think people get the picture better. I, you know, I'm struggling with one a vlog that or vlog or even a um, I probably need to do it as a broadcast, but I want to do one on the subject of transference. But it's a very, um, you know what I'm saying? It's a very psychobabble type word. Hi, Sakura. Good to see you, honey. I was talking about you earlier, saying I'm coming down to visit you. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to find other words and other, you know, I'm trying to find stories that I can tell around it that demonstrate transference and, and how it affects our lives. Uh, and it'll probably take me weeks to get all the bits together and get it all into one broadcast. But I think when I can do it, it'll help a lot of people understand some stuff. So that's what I'm always looking for is how can we have these broadcasts and, you know, have a bit of fun. <laughs> okay, this one I've got to read for the people who are doing the replay. You know, a couple of weeks, was it a couple of weeks ago, Beth, you you asked me this question. Somebody asked me this question and it was, you know, about the daughter was abusing her and asking her to take her to work every day, and it was really affecting her life. And I suggested that she might want to stop doing that. And strangely enough, that would be treating her daughter like an adult. And as an adult, she'd find another way. I've just heard 
update me on taking my daughter to work. She found a ride from somebody else at her job, and they will share gas money. <laughs> you see, when you treat her like an adult, she behaves like one. Oh, Kerry. Yeah, but this is the whole thing. You see, you were treating her like a, an, an, a, an infant who was unable to do anything on her own. I'm very proud of you, Beth. How does it feel? And, Beth, just a word of advice. Reward good behavior. Just keep telling her, wow, that was so difficult for you to do, but you are so proud of how she did that, and how she handled it, and how she made a plan. <laughs> it, <laughs> you see, Beth, it, that's why we're here. The, the, the whole reason we're here. We're here so people can come and tell us these stories and that we can, you know, maybe point you in, in a better direction. I just heard today from somebody um, that, that, had, that was really emotionally tied up with, um, emotionally tied up with, what was it? Um, a friend of their, their daughter they thought was being abused. And you know what I did was I gave her some advice and what and she wrote to me today and said, wow, the most amazing thing was that the whole thing had now gone in front of the courts and the courts actually believed the story. And there was evidence to suggest that there might be Munchausen syndrome going on. Oh, Canada, you will comment. D -d Don't kid yourself, honey. <laughs> oh, it's time for me to go. Um, <laughs> all right, so a couple of things. I, I really want to thank everybody for being here. Yes, and that is the point, Beth. And guess what? You were enabling that thinking. You, know, you understand, by what you did and the way you were thinking that she wasn't capable, you were enabling that. As soon as you turned around, as soon as you turned around and you said, I trust you to be able to make a plan, she did. When is the next live? Sunday at 3.30 Pacific time. You're in BC, so you're our time. <laughs> where, I, um, without giving away where you are, Canada, whereabouts are you in BC? Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. Sunday, 3.30 my, uh, BC time, yep. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate that. And by the way, I wanted to know, well, next week starts, no, there'll be broadcasts. I just might not be able to do Sunday. I did want to ask a couple of questions, though. Um, are you really? So you're, you're, you're sort of within an hour of me somewhere. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so the, the point is this, the point is that Canada, do you understand that you're not alone? All right. You're not alone in your struggle. You're not alone in any of it. And Sakura, uh, I'm still going to get back to you. I started looking today. I'm trying to find somewhere, um, to stay near where the wedding is. Once I've got that sorted out, I'll be able to plan better how to, to visit you. Ah, well, you never know. I have been known to say hello to a number of my viewers in time, my time. Oh, yes, that's what I wanted to ask you. Do you like the format that we're doing here on YouTube? Do you like the fact that we sort of have a big topic and we sort of work into it, do it, and then we work out of it again on the other side? Yeah, and you kept telling me you don't have a car, but remember, I do. 
<laughs> By the way, let me ask you one question, Sakura. And and um, would would Lake Stevens be very far away from you? That's what I thought. Okay, so that's the area I have to be in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I'm going to be in your neck of the woods on this uh, road trip. Yeah, exactly, Canada. I, I actually enjoy my road trips. But I do need your support, and I do need you guys to know how scared I am to hook up the trailer. For some reason, I think I'm too old now. Isn't that weird? Do any of you relate to that? It's like, will I be able to cope? Will my back be able to cope? Will I be able to deal with it? Now, what do you all know about me? Well, you do a very good job of it, actually, Aaron. It's amazing. Yeah, I need that sort of support, Canada. Keep reminding me I can do this. <laughs> and the worst thing is, yeah, I can get somebody to help me, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's a good idea if every day in the coming week I spend half an hour in the trailer. Not necessarily doing anything very smart, just getting used to being in the trailer again. And what I'm going to do is I, I have to be uh, at this wedding um, on the Saturday. I'm thinking maybe going down on the Thursday, which gives me enough space. If anything happens, I can probably get time to sort it out uh, and, and still be there for Saturday. And then... You know, stay. It's a lovely area around where Sakura lives. So I thought I might just stay there and, um, you know, just enjoy. And by the way, I think we're still in tulip season. Am I right, Sakura? Are the tulips still, is it still tulip time down there? Yeah, you know something? That's exactly what I was thinking, um, Canada. I need to go down there, spend half an hour in there, just tidying up a little bit. Um, you know, just working out, okay, what, what do I need in there? Just some basics. You know, I, I can go shopping once I'm there. Okay, so Sakura, why don't you do that for me, honey? Why don't you find out how long the Tulip Festival lasts for? Uh, how many of you want me to do that trip again? The cherry blossoms are out, I know. They're out in Japan as well. Did you see that? They're beautiful. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Remember, if you will. Um, two things. Number one, if you're watching this on the replay and you want to contribute, there is a, a PayPal donation button on the DearMamasal.com site. Um, would you remember as well that this wouldn't be possible without your support? I really do thank you all so much for the incredible um, support that you give me. I know that there are times when each of us suffers. <laughs> Liz, your timing really, really is amazing. I'm just saying goodbye. Um, who did that today? Alice did that today as well. Uh, Lizzie, <laughs> did you not get the notices? <laughs> ah, you, all right. <laughs> Oh, by the way, for those of you who know Matthew um, and Christy, you remember Matthew and Christy? It was so cute because I actually had a problem with WordPress. And I'm thinking about that because I'm looking at Liz, and Liz occasionally helps me with WordPress. But uh, I had this problem with WordPress, and I thought, I don't want to ask poor Liz again because I know she's busy. So what I did was I actually reached out to Matthew, and he didn't answer. And I'm going, okay, fine. And, you know, eventually I sort of worked it out because I do that. And then suddenly Matthew wrote to me and said, hey, you know, Mama Sal, anytime you need any help, you just need to let me know. I'm here for you. 
And, you know, I, I so love what you do for people. And I'd be here to help you any way I can. I'm going, oh, good. That means the next time I hit a roadblock. And he said, I'm so sorry I didn't reply. I meant to. And I went, okay, I'll forgive you. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're enjoying the new format. I'm, I want to tell you, it has made a huge difference in the Dear Mama Sal stuff as well. Um, you know, the number of views we're seeing, the, the amount of, you know, uh, YouTube really likes watch time. And obviously, you know, we get a lot of watch time when we do broadcasts. So that really helps as well. So I know this sounds really strange, but I, part of this helps me a great deal. So I'm very, very thankful to you. So everybody, remember to look after one another. But remember, most of all, looking after yourself is not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? It is not a bad thing. Canada, make sure you write to me and put support in the um, subject line, support needed by Canada. All right. So I, that will ring bells for me in the right direction. Jody, thank you for keeping track as you do so beautifully. I really appreciate it. Now, you're probably wondering, what are we going to talk about on Sunday? Now, I haven't worked that out yet, but as soon as I work it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> um. I, I've got sort of a number of different subjects that I've been working on. So is there anything in particular that you guys would like me to talk about on Sunday? Oh, I'm going to take off my tartan day now. It's hot. Thank you, Jody. I really appreciate it. Whew, that was warm. <laughs> um, all right. So please remember, kick my what sits with the two by four. Uh, uh, I need to get in that trailer. For those of you who really care about me, make sure you keep asking, have you been in the trailer yet? Yeah. Are the tires pumped up? You know. <laughs> Attitude adjustments. We did a lot about that at lunchtime. So you want more of that? Yeah, I think a lot of people need that. You had snow today? Huh. Okay, my goal for the coming week, Kerry, is to get into that trailer. So that when I do the turnaround, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to go and do that speech, come back, and then get that trailer, hook it up, and, and go back um, when I've got time that I can, uh, you know, have issues. If I, you, you know what I'm saying. One trip I'm doing because I have to speak, and I, I've got that sorted out. The second one is for me. I actually want to take a couple of days. I want to go to the wedding. I want to visit Judy and Benji. What meeting did you go to? Or don't don't say that if you don't want to, but um Oh, I didn't. I'm sad to hear that. But it's working again. Kerry, that's the important thing. The guy got it working. That's that's the main thing. Uh, that's the reason, by the way, Kerry. I've got I've got one of those old fashioned gas uh, fireplaces in my living room. I won't. I when I renovated my house, I didn't update that. The reason I didn't update it is because those old ones are better than the new ones. If you have uh, a power failure happen or something. You can still get them going. You can still heat the house and all sorts of things. I'm sure you I'm sure you were a popsicle. You know, that's it's cold. I can remember being in Maine during the ice storm of 80 something and uh, 1980 something or rather or 90 something. Um there was a huge ice storm and I was in Maine at that time and it was horrific. I literally was sleeping um, with with a toque over my head and three layers of socks and my my down coat, you know, it was. It, I remember it very well. It's not nice at all. All right, everybody, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for everything, and thank you for helping me do what I do, Jody. Thank you for all the beta testing and everything else that you've been doing to help, guys. If you see anything on the emails or stuff that I'm sending, there's a typo or something, you know. 
be part of the team and help me get it right. I would appreciate it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, I'm sure I don't pick them all up. So if there's anything you're going, I wonder if Sal knows there's a typo in there. The chances are I don't. So you know, let me know. I appreciate that. And as we do these things, let me know what you like, what you don't like, so that I can you know, keep working with it. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, do remember to challenge yourself this week. All right, do something, learn, no, learn something. Do something that's a bit of a challenge. I'm going to face the fear of the trailer, and you need to decide what it is you want to do. And I will see some of you on Sunday, and the rest of you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we'll see you soon. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, look after yourself. And I will try and find the right buttons to hit to get this program to stop, which takes a bit of doing. Bye for now. One.